Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm John Gray. It's election day. Hallelujah. It'll Hope everybody goes good. out and votes. It'll be over tonight. <laughs> we're, yeah, we're just living here. I yes, hope everybody's are. voting. I'm Peggy Burton. Good morning. And I'm Jim Fuller. A lot of people are. But I think it's probably going to be a record turnout. I think there Sorry. there is from everything I've yeah. heard. Well, you know, the early <laughs> voting was massive. It was comparatively speaking, but yet when I came in this morning, uh, I passed Grace Baptist Church, and there were people standing in line almost to the street to get right. in there to vote. Right. Which is. You would think yeah. with all the early voting, it wouldn't be that way, but it certainly was. I always right. vote early. I, I pick a day, I pick a time when I know all the parents are gone and, you know, that have dropped their kids off school and gone to vote. I always pick a time and I just go straight in there and vote and I'm gone. <laughs> yeah, it didn't take me, it didn't take me 10 minutes to vote. <coughs> well, there wasn't a lot on the ballot, actually. I Not think really, that, yeah. I think there were three pages on the Yeah, it where was a pretty, pretty uh, simple ballot yeah, this time. So there's about a... What? Well, there's, I was getting to that. There were, th there were three four, pages. There were four races. Yeah, well, there were three. There was three pages. Of course, I, I voted in Franklin County, but there were three pages on the ballot, in the electronic ballot. But there were about 50 oh. people running for governor. Yeah, yeah okay. I know. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, that was, yeah. I know. You've yeah. only heard of two of them, but there were about 50. But there was a lot of people. And I, I guess people. Who was that old boy used to run all the time? John J. Hooker. John J. Hooker. And he, he was a serious candidate. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. He, he wore seersucker suits and motor hats and yeah. bow ties. I voted for him once. Well, at least once or twice. Well, you know, I would just say to everybody, either go vote or keep your mouth shut. Oh, absolutely. Right? Absolutely. You know, well, okay. this, is one of the, this is one of the few places in the world where you have this opportunity. Yeah. And you can vote at home. If you, if you're free. You can do it, can't you? Vote yeah. from home. If you're no. disabled or oh, something, yeah. Yeah, you can. can get a, what do you call that? An early ballot, I guess. Absentee. Yeah. Absentee. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I heard. I heard this morning they were talking on the on the radio about all of the mean commercials and all of that stuff. But then this person, these people were saying that they had gone to vote early vote, and he said, no matter who they were. Everybody was just cordial friendly. and friendly. I know. We're all friendly. <laughs> well, that's the way it should be. That, that's all of us that these people who are cutting, gutting each other are trying to represent <laughs> like each other. And you, where I voted, they actually got signs on the wall that says, you know, there's something about this is a voting place. Yeah. You, but no you don't bother anybody you know. else. No, no try right. to, There's a certain distance which from, the, yeah. from the yeah, facility. That's right. That's right. So it was, it was good. But I, I, I'll be glad it's over because I'm tired of listening. To well, well, there's been so much, uh, uh, so much advertising done, particularly in the senatorial race in Tennessee, and uh, and. <laughs> an amazing amount of money. There's no telling. I, I, I read the other day, and I th we talked about this last week. I think where I thought there was, which probably up 10 million from then. It probably is. Oh, yeah. And there's 70 million dollars we thought last week had been spent on that senatorial race. It, I, I saw somebody projected that when all is said and done, at the end of the, with the packs and everybody not necessarily affiliated with the candidates themselves, that it might go to 100 million in that wow. race, which is. More money than's ever been spent on something like that in the state of Tennessee. The candidates themselves, uh, Bredesen, Bredesen and Blackburn, raised and spent about 15 million apiece. Right. And so that's 30 of it. The rest of that money came from special interest groups or PACs. That's right. That sort of and, thing. And from just, out of state. just like I said before we went on the air, those horrible ads that are being run demeaning each of the candidates. By special interest groups, I don't think changes anybody's decision. So that's seventy million dollars that could have been pumped into Tennessee for health care. I know, I know. That's that really bothers me. Uh, veterans care. There's so many other ways that that money could have been spent because I don't think it makes one bit of difference in the outcome of this election. It might to some people who just casually don't, who really don't pay much attention and, and to that. And who believe that. everything they see yeah. on TV. Yeah, and in this day and age, you can't believe much of anything. Know. But how many times do you don't have to see it twice, five times an hour? Right, right. right. Every commercial break had two know, commercials yeah. for each of them. Yeah, I know, I know, I know one, of the ad, one of the ads, uh, uh, negative ads, and I don't think the Bredesen campaign ran it. I think one of the PACs did, oh, sure. and, as they did most of those. Sure. But uh, uh, was talking about Marsha 
took $2.7 million and voted herself a raise seven times or something. But the fact of the matter is, is there's 400 and something people in the House. I doubt her vote made yeah. a lot of difference. No, it didn't make a but, uh, but beyond that, uh, $2.7 million, she probably did. But that's that's her salary for 16 years that she's been there because they make about $175,000 a year. Yeah. So, free medical, you know, that was a little. Free medical care for the rest of their existence. Uh, right. Even military. So that was a little misleading. By the same well, token, of course it was. they claimed, uh, some group claimed that Phil Bredesen spent uh, I don't know, $10 million remodeling the governor's mansion. You His know, playhouse. When he, when he was there. Well, the fact is, uh, Bredesen never even lived there. No. Uh, he, he lived in his own home because at that time, and it had been going on for several years before he elected, they had all kinds of issues with the governor's mansion. It was falling apart. It was falling apart, yeah. and they were uh, with, uh, you know, asbestos issues and, and you sure, know, sure. environmental issues. So they'd been working on the thing for several years before he was ever governor, and his wife actually raised about $6 million, was wow. headed up. Right, uh, right. Uh, an effort to, to fix it, to yeah. actually well, fix it and build that uh, banquet facility. There. Anyway, it's, it's real simple. It's real simple. Figures lie and liars figure. <laughs> <laughs> you can make figures do anything you want them to do. Right. I remember when they were on, uh, on, uh, all the vice president from Tennessee. Al Gore. Al Gore. Oh. They were on Al Gore about him being green and all that, and they talked about how much his, his heat bill was at his house. Yeah. Well, if you take the volume, not the square footage, but you take the volume, because a lot of those big houses have, or some rooms are two and three stories tall. Yeah. You take the volume that's in his house and divide the volume, the cubic feet of what he heated and cooled and reference it to the cubic feet of what a normal household in a neighborhood is, he wasn't paying any more for electricity than they were. Right. He just happened to own more space. Right. Are you supposed to be penalized because you own more space? <laughs> yeah. yeah, so you, I, that's you what you I say, liars mind. figure and figures lie. But you know in the governor's race it's been very, pretty civil. Yes, it really has. It's been very I, civil. I, I uh, they're. Di there are distinctive it. differences in what sure. each one of them believe, sure. and one of them being accepted federal money for health care, you know, that Tennessee does not do. And and they differ there. They differ on that, and they differ on schools, and they differ but on they gun laws. But they have been very civil with each Nothing other. So. As a matter of fact, I saw my, my opponent's a good man. Yeah, exactly. That's what but I'm saying. But here's, here's something that he would like to do, and I think we need to do this. Right. Vote for me if you like my idea. Right. You know, nobody's gutting anybody or cutting anybody's throat. <laughs> right. Yeah, you know, I think it's been a wonderful. But it's been a long time since campaigns typically went that way. This yeah. uh, negative. I stuff do believe works. the voter turnout will be one of the largest we've ever had. Oh, in it de definitely will. Don't yeah. you think? Definitely I would think will. nationally as well it will be, not just in the state of Tennessee. It will. Be in the, I think there's 22 states that do not have early voting, so, you know. Can, oh, my goodness. So. Um, can a poor man ever win an election? No. Uh, no. 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 To me, that's sad. It is sad. You know, because there might he be... He could be Einstein. He could be brilliant. He could, he could have all the answers to everything that could solve all our problems. If right. he ain't got the money, he won't he'll never be heard. Right. That's sad. That's the way it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I mean, it, it, obviously, when we talk about these unbelievable amounts of dollars in this, I know, it's just in this Senate my race, of course, that's a statewide race. What spending. But it, you're you're talking several million dollars even to win to win a congressional right. seat, and uh, and probably these days a couple of hundred thousand dollars to even win a state seat. A state seat in an area where you don't have a major TV market, you know. Yeah, that's, uh, that's tough. If you're running for a congressional seat in Knoxville or Nashville where, the, where everybody's running the, all those TV, TV ads, ads yeah. you, I mean, you could spend a million dollars winning the state seat, I guess. But sure, Easily, sure. but, uh, you know, one thing about the district we're in, there's not a major TV market. We're, we're a major TV. <laughs> yeah. There you go. And we're cheap. <laughs> and we're cheap. And we're no, cheap. We're, and ex well, and, we're and inexpensive. We're not cheap. Yeah, and everybody who get, gets the same deal. Yeah, <laughs> right. You know, uh, but with that put aside, which it will be put aside tonight, thank goodness, 
and we'll all know something and 49 percent will be happy and 51 mad or 51 percent happy and 49 mad i just uh, hope a civil war doesn't break out yeah. <laughs> but one thing that's to us right here is more important than that because we live here and we function here every day is tell them the Wildcats are in the second round of the playoffs they they are. Yeah. and they'll be playing Friday night at Wilkins Stadium. They'll be playing Marshall County, who we defeated by one point the last time we played them. Yeah, and that, that's probably going to be a really good game, I It'll guess. Be a very Do you think game. it helps? Tullahoma or hurts them that they played them once before already. I, I you, was at the first of the season, and both of them are different football teams. Yeah. Oh yeah. So it really, you know, they've added. I mean, like like Coach Olive does. You start a season, or even the pros, Collie. You start a season off, and you're using certain plays, and as your team grows, you add plays off of those plays. Sure. Yeah. You know, it's like when you can sing. When you can sing four chords and then all of a sudden you learn how to sing harmony, yeah. right. you know, it's it makes a whole, it's different, a whole new ball, whole new ball game. Right. And these will be whole new ball games. But what we want you to do is fill the stands at Wilkins Stadium Friday night. Uh, it's supposed to be pretty weather. And that's why you're so hoarse today. I'm, I was you hoarse, from, your I was hoarse from screaming last week. <laughs> And I won't say why. <laughs> I will. I will. However, though, uh, when you get 216 yards on how many penalties? penalties? 28. Penalties. 28 penalties. You, and the other you, team had three penalties for 15 you, yards. You get to wonder. And they passed the ball almost 50 times. Yeah. Now you tell me there was no holding, no, holding, no, no blocking no, in the yeah, back, right? No any of that stuff. So uh, they had three motion penalties. Is all yeah. right there. Five-yard motion penalty. Well, I, I, that's game. just that's just unbelievable. So, yeah, unheard it's crazy. of. It's crazy. Unheard of. Hey, um, you got a point for us? I have a couple here. While you may not have the resources to acquire all you want, most likely you have the ability to find all you need. I like that. And then another one. Get a job. Another one. <laughs> Talent is a wonderful gift. Keep it honed sharply. No one knows when an elusive door may crack open, leading to opportunity. True. There's all kinds of talent out there. It's everywhere, but opportunities aren't everywhere. Right. But so when an opportunity on, yeah. knocks, well, be prepared. Yeah. Have, have your tools all have sharpened tools up, sharpened ready, to go. ready to go. All right, folks, we'll be back after these commercial messages. Don't go away because we have a show full of wonderful people today. It's football time in Tennessee, and nobody tackles the competition like the Russell Barnett Automotive family with six locations to serve you, certified collision center, over 1,000 new and pre-owned vehicles to choose from at russellbarnett.com, hometown auto rental, limited lifetime powertrain warranty on certain units, certified pre-owned units. Too many reasons to mention why. Keep asking the question, why buy anywhere else? Ah, the glory days. Running to daylight on the gridiron and chasing a ball with a mind of its own. Cheering the team to victory and marching to the beat of your own drum. Memories that last a lifetime. But sometimes we're reminded of our glory days in ways we'd rather forget. Get back in the game. The rehab team at Life Care Center of Tullahoma is ready to help you live and play well. I'm Mike Winton, your candidate for state representative. I'm not a politician. I'm your neighbor. I grew up on a farm in Pelham. I don't have lofty goals for some type of title. I just see ways that I can help. Tell me how we can work together to make our community better. I'm not concerned whether we're red or blue. I want us to be red, white, and blue. Vote Mike Winton, state representative, on November the 6th. I'm just one of us for all of us. Paid for by the candidate. 
Get your news first, fast, and free with your news leader on 6 every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday nights at 6, 8, and 10 p.m. Local weather, sports, community calendar events, and a comprehensive look at the latest news stories and newsmakers as only a video news broadcast can do. Get it first, fast, and free with news leader on Channel 6, your local information network. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and we are pleased to have joining us on the set now, Tom Furman, and Tom is with uh, American Legion Post 44 in uh, Franklin County, Winchester. And uh, this is kind of a special time of year for you guys, isn't it? It's uh, what I would consider to be the most thrilling time of the year. This uh -huh. is a, a big thing for us. We're, uh, uh, we, were, we were trying to get uh, a little bit of community involvement, and what we did was, <clears throat> excuse me, what we did was, is, uh, we, uh, we had a, a brainstorming session and one of our members came up and said, you know, we should have a parade. Mm -hmm. And it's like, why didn't we think of this earlier? <laughs> so uh, we, uh, we got together and started, uh, started working on the parade and we wound up with a, uh, a really uh, good idea of what we wanted. But then we said, you know what, it'd be even better if we branched out to the other communities in the area. Mm -hmm. uh, we, I don't like to say the word, but we're sort of like the forgotten folks of uh, Middle Tennessee. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not quite into Chattanooga, and we're definitely not into Nashville. Right. We're just here. You right. Know? And uh, so we started talking to the other counties, and we've, we're we're really looking forward to to uh, having participation from all the counties, and and uh, uh, we've got the bands from uh, <coughs> excuse me, Coffee County. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got the Civil Air Patrol coming. Tullahoma uh, ROTC is coming. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got, uh, I'm, I'm trying not to forget anybody and it's really hard. Uh, uh, we have the Tennessee National Guard coming. Uh, of course, we have our local and uh, county law enforcement officers, uh, who, of which we have several veterans in mm -hmm. that group. Mm -hmm. and, uh, we have, our, of course, our uh, Franklin County High School and Huntland High School uh, bands, uh, so we're going to have a we're going to have a good time. And I'm in if I'm in remiss of forgetting anybody, I apologize, but uh, uh, I'm I'm sort of overwhelmed with this. Our parade coordinator couldn't make it today. And, uh, Who and, uh, is your parade coordinator? Uh, uh, Ray Cobb is our parade coordinator. Oh, right, know him well, yeah. And uh, Ray's a, a, he's, he's grabbed the reins. I haven't been able to get it, uh, as involved as I wanted to be for personal reasons, but Ray's grabbed the reins and he's done an excellent job. Uh, I, I give him full credit for, mm -hmm. for everything he's done. And I think we're going to have a good time. Our grand marshals for the parade are going to be as many of the World War II veterans in the area that we could contact, which as of right now, it's eight. Uh-huh. So they're gonna- That was a great choice, by the way. Yes, sir. That was one of our other members. Uh, we were saying, well, who's gonna be the Grand Marshal? Who's gonna... And one of the, one of the uh, uh, other members spoke up and said, why don't we do the World War II veterans? It only makes sense. Right. We're losing them at such a high rate. Sure. We wanna, we wanna honor them. Right. And. Uh, and they, uh, uh, it was overwhelming, the, uh, the response for that. Everybody liked that idea. So they're going to be the Grand Marshals. Of course, we're going to have some VIPs, and we're going to have uh, uh, the uh, base commander at Arnold is going to come and be one of our VIPs. Mm -hmm. We're also going to have our, our uh, Winchester City Mayor and, and a few others. But uh, all Your post is located in the city it, of Winchester, in right? In the city of Winchester. Right. Yes, sir. It's a, it's a bit of a misnomer, and I don't really know how... <clears throat> it came uh, about, but in evidently years earlier, uh, they took the name Franklin County American Legion. Swanee, I do not want to. I don't. I don't want to uh, uh, bypass them because they're they're an important group. But right. uh, Swanee has their own post, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know they're they're an excellent bunch of folks up there, and and. Uh, and no way do I want to shorten them. We just wound up with the name Franklin right. County American right. Legion. Right. So, uh, that's pretty much how we look at it. And uh, the this is the first time you've had a parade in 
forever, I guess, almost. Our best guess, yeah. this is our best guess, for Veterans Day Parade, our best guess is somewhere either 1945 or 1946, with which the best estimate is probably 1946, because uh -huh. uh, uh, Ray went actually back through the uh, archives and he found photos, and the photos he had had 1946 model cars. Yeah, right. So they had to come out either late 1945 right. or 1946. Right. But that was the last uh, Veterans Day parade we had in Franklin County. Yeah, okay. What, what, what is the parade route? Where will you guys be? Well, we're actually uh, we're forming up uh, on College Avenue, which for those of you who aren't familiar with Car College Avenue, it's going to be uh, on the way to Cowan uh, on US 41A uh, out of Winchester. And it's going to be at... Uh, Country Club Road and College Avenue. Mm -hmm. It's going to uh, go uh, into the town square. It's going to go around the town square. It's going to uh, head out. Uh, and I'm, I'm, uh, I'm at a loss for the street, but we're going to head out, and we're basically going to wind up at the uh, American Legion Hall mm -hmm. on Vine Street. I see. And we're going to have a reception afterwards for folks who might want to come in and. Uh, we've done a lot of work to our hall, and we're really proud of it. Mm -hmm. uh, this is all volunteer work we've done. Right. We're, we lo we love to show it off. I nah, don't a, blame you. We have quite a bit done. We have a, quite a bit to go too. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we, we'd be happy to have anybody come in and, and uh, spend some time with us after the parade. Okay. Now I don't believe we told them what day it is. Is oh. it going to be on the 11th or? Yes, sir. It's okay. going to be uh, the the uh, the, VF, the VFW has a. Uh, a yearly memorial uh, uh, celebration uh, on the square, and they do it at uh, uh, the 11th hour, 11th day, which is Veterans Day, right. at 11 a.m., and uh, uh, it lasts for about an hour. Well, we didn't want to interfere with what the VFW was doing, so uh, we're going to start our parade. We're going to form up around 1.30. And then we're going to go ahead and uh, have the parade. So about 2:30 or so is when we're going to go ahead and start the parade. Okay. All right. So it'll it'll be a it'll be a good day for for Franklin County, I think, and I hopefully it'll be a good day for everybody that joins in. Yeah, and this is going to be a fun event, I think. You know, I'm I'm looking forward right. to it. I'm excited. And you, and, you, and you kind of associate. Uh, Veterans Day with having parades. It's exactly. just that we don't have any around here. I, I think Bedford County may have one. I'm not sure, yeah. but uh, but uh, it, it's it's a great great way to celebrate and honor our veterans. Well, you know, the thing that will be really terrific is if this is our first annual one. Yes. And we split it up between the counties. That's that, that's one thing that we would love to see happen. Mm -hmm. Maybe next year, maybe Coffee County decides, well, we want to do it. Right. So we go over there and give them all the assistance we can. Sure. And then the year after that, maybe more county says, well, we want to do it. Yeah. Right. And we all we all work together for the common goal. Right. And uh, it might be a regular thing. Right. I'd love to see that. Right. But this is going to be the first one in a long, long time, and it's going to be a lot of fun. So everybody, I'm sure, is, is invited to come Everybody's out. Everybody's invited to come and watch. And uh, uh, estimates are ranging anywhere from 2,000 to 3,000 people yeah. right now. And if we can bring it up to five or 10, it's not going to break our hearts. <laughs> I bet. I bet. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming thank by. You, and I hope it's a great success. I I'm sure it will be. Thank you very much. It. Folks, we'll be right back in just a moment with more living. Let me tell you about the toughest guy on earth. He does the work of two jobs, but only gets paid for one. He's tough enough to feed the man who gave him a lifetime of nourishment. <clears throat> he has the crazy strength to lift the man that raised him up without even flinching. That's right. No employee of the month bonus check here. This guy, no. This warrior will always be by his father's side, even if his dad will hardly remember. Good luck finding a gym to train for that. If this guy isn't the toughest guy on the planet, then I don't know who is. Caregiving is tougher than tough. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. 
Is this the year you want to get fit? If so, check out just some of the things Tullahoma Parks and Rec has to offer. Kickboxing, aerobics, silver sneakers workouts, swim lessons, boot camp, water aerobics, basketball, Zumba, yoga, pickleball, lap swimming, treadmill, karate. Get fit, Tullahoma, and have some fun with Tullahoma Parks and Rec. When your family suffers the loss of a loved one, the caring and compassionate staff at Tullahoma Funeral Home and Coffee County Funeral Chapel are standing by to assist you in every way possible. We are proud to support local industry and offer only Batesville caskets. Many funeral homes don't own or operate a crematory. We utilize the only crematory in Coffee County. Your loved one never leaves Coffee County. We can accommodate any need and any budget. Consider our complete pre-need service to remove this burden from your family during their time of grief. Lock in today's low costs and protect from inflation. Tullahoma Funeral Home and Coffee County Funeral Chapel. Our family caring for your family. He's back. The spark plug of Telehoma, our Mr. Brooks, Winston Brooks. Well, thank you very much. How are you doing, buddy? Man, I'm doing fantastic. It's a I know to be you here. are, and this is a great time of year. It's a great time to be in Fall Telehoma. time, weather's changing. Luckily, we didn't have a whole lot of damage last yes, night. I think winter has arrived. Winter has arrived, but right around the corner is Veterans Day. Yes, sir. That's what I was here to talk about today. And, you know, it's a very important Veterans Day. You may not uh, be aware, but uh, Veterans Day this year is going to pay tribute to the 100th anniversary of Armistice Day. That's right. So November 11th, 1918. So it's really important that we honor and remember those veterans that fought in World War I, as well as all of our, our veterans. Sure. But, um, specifically, uh, this year we're going to have a, a focus uh, on uh, um, World War I and the end of hostilities which is just uh, an amazing time. Um, oh, yeah, haven't you? Yes. The fact that armies and governments would, you know, agree and, you know, what to Not what to they, kill each other anymore. And stop it right when they said. Yeah. And so the uh, Veterans Day this year is going to uh, be commemorated uh, by, on the, with the city down at South Jackson on Monday, November 12th. We're going to start at 1045. Uh, we ask you to arrive at 10:45. The uh, event will actually start sharply at 11. Right. And our keynote speaker this year is uh, Base Commander Colonel Scott Kane. Mm -hmm. So we look forward to. Um, I've his, heard him speak before. He's a very good orator. He is, and we have a special treat. His daughter Nadia, who's a freshman at our high school, is going to do the introduction, which is a little of a changeup. But um, that was something Mayor Curley arranged after um, she introduced him last year at the East Middle School. Um, Veterans Day ceremony. Right. She's a very impressive young woman. Right. And, you know, um, actually I was with uh, Colonel Kane yesterday and he uh, made a comment about one of the things that makes this Veterans Day program so great is the music. Not only the moving tribute to the veterans, but the music and the caliber of the music there. So we have uh, the brass ensemble from the high school, yes. the Aristocats, we have Lloyd Smith singing the patriotic medley. That is just just blows, Lloyd blows me away. He does a great what job. What a voice he has, and his command of those songs uh -huh. is just, if you don't have hair standing up on your arms and the back of your neck while he's doing that, go to the hospital because you need, you're not breathing. <laughs> well, and we also have a very special guest, an a cappella singer, uh -huh. who um, for the last couple of years has done a great song called Faithful Soldier, our own John Gray. Yeah. Thank you. And we appreciate it's, it's an honor your to contribution. Be, it's an honor to be asked. I, I hope my voice, I, I told Winston, I yelled so loud at the Tullahoma football game on Friday <laughs> night, I still can't talk. So this, this Friday night, seeing as how this event's on Monday, That's right. I'm going to have to keep my mouth shut. Yes, make sure you get that voice out. Because it's a treat. It's a real treat to come out to see. Me. Yes, All the fans, <laughs> John, come out. And, and we have a nice reception afterwards. Oh, yeah, it's a wonderful yes. event. And we'll have Feel So Good. It's going to be having the coffee out there. We'll have cake. We've got sandwiches. Great time of fellowship after the um, ceremony. And um, Jackie Duncan, our alderman, will be doing a, a poetry reading, as right. well as Mary Ann Scott from... The, she's representing two organizations this year, the uh, DAR right. and the uh, uh, GFWC Women's Club. Right. So we've got a, a full um, program. We just want to invite the community to come out um, and honor our veterans. And, um, you know, I've got a quick interesting story I want to share with you. Um, many people in the community know Bill Carden. Mm -hmm. 
uh, Bill was a retired engineer at AEDC, and he got very excited when he saw the cover uh, for the Veterans Day program, which is the WW1 100 years. And he brought um, these documents uh, that was his father's diary. And his father um, was in France in the Argonne Forest on November 11th, 1918. So he was just telling me this incredible story about his father who uh, was drafted, went and trained for four weeks before going to the front line, was there uh, fortunately for only a few short weeks before um, they um, had the armistice agreement. And so he was able to come home safely. So. Uh, <clears throat> He was um, very uh, passionate about the fact that we uh, honor the World War I veterans. And so it's a pretty neat um, local connection, I thought, that uh, Bill shared with us. Yeah, but what, what you folks need to realize, and, and what was his father's name? William Carden. William Carden was in, where was he? He was in the Argonne Forest. Argonne Forest in France. In France. Right, Eastern and, France. And he is fighting and all of a sudden... Actually under a bra, uh, um, artillery barrage. Artillery, all of a sudden at 11 o'clock, mm -hmm. everybody just quits. Yep, that's Even amazing. those people out in the woods, hand-to-hand -hand combat people, just stopped. Mm -hmm. How incredible yes. is that? It is really uh, a fascinating story. Yeah. And so we'll, we'll hear more about that um, at this um, ceremony on uh, November 12th. Yeah. And, and it's great. You know, and the other thing that impresses me too is these uh, um, veterans and these soldiers and these uh, military people that, uh, you know, they, the courage they have to do their duty just to take a few weeks of training and then go face, you know, oh, yes. the dangers and, and harm's way. <coughs> and, and, in, and often, many times in uh, times of conflict, they're just citizens that are called up. Right. And, and right. They, they don't, they just go. But one thing I want to tell you, folks, is you said, Sharply at 11 o'clock. Yes. Be there at quarter till. Yes. Uh, but come earlier than that. Be there by 10:30. The room is usually packed. And what is so, what is so wonderful about this event, is it's sort of like a family reunion in a way. A lot right. of these guys and girls don't see each other much, but that one time mm -hmm. a year, and the and the the camaraderie that you see with these veterans greeting each other and thanking each other and caring for each other is worth you coming early just to enjoy watching that. To me, that's one of the best parts of the whole program oh, I agree. is to see our veterans who we honor on that day interacting with each other. Right. I couldn't it, agree. It, you know, it's, it's just a wonderful event, and please mark your calendar uh, about that because just don't miss it. You don't miss it. It's, it's, we live in a free nation. We're voting today, and that's something else. Go vote. Uh, we're voting today because we live in the freest country in the world, and we're able to voice our opinion without fear of uh, retribution. Sure. And, and it's, it's because of these veterans, veterans and these people who stand on the wall and fight for your freedom. Support them, honor them, be at this event uh, on uh, Monday the 12th at 11 o'clock or 10.30. Yes. Uh, Come 10.30. Yes, be there by 10, be in your seat by 10.45, yep. just so we can get started right yep. at 11. It's really right, important right. to do that. And, yeah. uh, and the doors will probably be open at 10 o'clock. Oh, yes. You can come whenever you want. I'll be there at 7 a.m. Winston will be there at 7 a.m. <laughs> you want to volunteer, come on He'll down. He'll be polishing something and moving chairs. Mr. Brooks, it's always a pleasure You're and an welcome. honor to have oh, you here. Likewise. You're one of my heroes. Oh, thank you. Yeah, every day you work for us and the folks in the city of Tullahoma and the surrounding communities doing an absolutely wonderful job. Well, we've got a great community. What's your task to do? Thank you. Not just, not just anybody can do it the way you do it. <laughs> no, we're all proud of you. Thanks. Okay. We'll be right back. Partners for Healing provides medical care to the working uninsured of Coffee, Franklin, and Moore counties. We are in Tullahoma from 8 to 5, Monday through Thursdays, and in Manchester on Fridays from 8 to 12. We provide primary medical care and offer an in-house disease management program. My name is Rosie Mitchell, and I would just like to say I am blessed to have partners in my life. Please call 455-5014 for more information. Thank you for being one of our Partners for Healing. Rush Bricken understands the importance of education. 
Rush Bricken knows agriculture and farming is vital to Tennessee. Rush Bricken believes in a good education and creating job skills. On November 6th, you have a choice for your Tennessee state representative. I'll represent your conservative values in Nashville. 40 years in business. I'm picking Bricken. 20 years on the county commission. We're, We're picking, picking Bricken. Vote Rush Bricken November 6th to the Tennessee State House of Representatives. Is this the year you want to get fit? If so, check out just some of the things Tullahoma Parks and Rec has to offer. Kickboxing, aerobics, silver sneakers workouts, swim lessons, boot camp, water aerobics, basketball, Zumba, yoga, pickleball, lap swimming, treadmill, karate. Get fit, Tullahoma, and have some fun with Tullahoma Parks and Rec. Talking history about this and that. It's conversations with John and Pat. With John and Pat. With John and Pat. Hello, everyone. I'm John Rigman. And this is Pat Welch, and we're here today for the segment 93 of the Conversations with John and Pat. We've got a interesting subject today and uh, I know they have a guitar but this is a is the dulcimer that I made back in 1980 38 years ago it, time has really crept by so John like. it's uh, way past the statute of limitations so if you were messing around at school when you should have been teaching in the shop yeah did that did Tommy Allen help you with that in the shop no, class no uh, Mr. Osteen I think helped me a little bit <laughs> well the principal allows it it's all right now this uh, walnut was Milner Carden got me a good piece of walnut. I thought he charged me too much, but I, I bought it from Milner. I, I just kidding about that. I'd like to hurt the conversation. <laughs> now, is that this is spruce right here, and I'm not sure how I got that. But this fretboard, uh, I went to Paul Powell years ago and said, Paul, I I can make the body of this, but how how do you make how do you make the fretboard? And he said, well, just let me give you one. Just let me give you one. That's the kind of guy Paul Pyle was. And I'm going to do something here, and I'm not a good dulcimer player. In fact, these strings are the same strings I've had of the whole 38 years. So it won't, it won't sound that great. So anyway, here's uh, When the Roll is Called Up Yonder. <laughs> But I'm that's I'm what not you call that's on what it. you call branching out right there. Yeah, I branched out a little bit, didn't let I? Let me uh, let's see what is that spruce on the back too then? Mm-hmm. And uh, I I worked hard and I worked diligently and I was really careful. I can be an artist artist if I want to be. That's, some, that's how not, much is this is Rickman and how much of this is Osteen's? I guess would be <laughs> most of it's Rickman. Pretty nice. <laughs> Mr. Osteen, I'd still see him with his pipe in his mouth as he works on something. No <laughs> <Yeah>. pipe. Uh, <laughs> Rickman. <laughs> <laughs> he would learn he he learned to play the, the ukulele. I taught him how to play and sometimes he'd get his desk <laughs> and play the ukulele pipe in his mouth. <laughs> uh, but we're talking about Paul Powell today. And and if you would, Philip, go to that picture of the bridge. A dedication. Now that is a picture of uh, Miss Powell with a sign in front of her. Wood of Paul Powell, Susan Ensfelder, Felder, daughter, and Wayne Powell, son. And the bridge is on Wilson Avenue, as you know, and uh, which crosses Rock Creek. And uh, I, I know that as a child he played in that creek. And uh, Paul died in 1991 at the age of 78 and was a strong community leader. You know, he, uh, uh, he was a... John, I want, before you talk too much more about Paul, uh, Ms. Powell, I believe, 
is 101. Uh, that's right. And she attended church. Uh, uh, a member at uh, Sealer Lane Church of Christ told me that she was there last Sunday. That's uh, pretty incredible. My mother's 101. She's right. at Life Care. And, uh, but Ms. Ms. Uh, Powell, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, they were born in uh, my mother in 1917, so Ms. Powell probably the same year. Uh, he was a capable electrician. He was pretty much self-taught on everything he did. He was an award-winning photographer, received much notoriety from dulcimers. My brother's uh, wife bought my brother a dulcimer, and I asked him to find out what number it was. He, he he uh, put a number on each of his dulcimers, and uh, but he hadn't got back with me on what number that was. Miss Powell was Paul's right hand, always supporting his efforts. Reminds me of the old song, Side by Side. We ain't got a barrel of money. We might look <laughs> silly and funny, but we see. Uh, and he, uh, Miss Powell and Mr. Powell, they shared the load. And uh, Alderman Jimmy Blanks uh, helped honor Mr. and Ms. Powell at the bridge dedication. Jimmy was a family friend. Paul also uh, a writer, keeping Tullahoma's rich heritage and culture alive in history. He was behind many community projects. Ms. Powell said about her husband, Tullahoma meant everything to him. Isn't that wonderful? It is great. And there are there are many people, and, and I think of Bob Couch. I Those think. two pop up, and every, every once in a while, somebody will come say, "Are you and Rickman? Y'all are like Bob Couch and Paul Pallas?" And no, we're not either, no. and not trying to be. No, you know. no, we can't match that. We're way behind that. But but it takes two of us. Where it just took one, one of them, of each, it's whatever yeah. they did. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, uh, that's, that's he was a photographer for thirty years and 20 years handcrafted dulcimers. In fact, there was a festival in Tullahoma and it meant, went on for many years. It was the, uh, the it pile, was named after him. Named yeah. after him, the pile, yeah. pile, pile dulcimer. I think Bill Rust was really involved in that uh, too. The uh, Dulcimer Days Festival, I think that was the name of it. Uh, Bill, I was gonna have Philip to put up a, uh, a picture of Bill Rust. I'm sorry I didn't, I forgot to do that, but Bill Rust was one of his uh, close friends and. And uh, he was a good banjo player. Uh, but but uh, Mr. Powell built over 1,600 dulcimers. Wow. That's a lot of dulcimers. Uh, and he was the heart of that Dulcimer Days Festival that was a yearly event in Tullahoma back in the day. And I guess after he left, after he d was deceased, they didn't keep the festival going. But to me, a dulcimer... And, and this is just my opinion. I think it sounds like bagpipes in some way because when you're up and down these two strings, these two strings together and you're hitting the, the other strings, they all sound the same. And that's the way a bagpipe sounds lots of times. You know you're doing the single note, but in the background you have a constant sound. Well, uh, the ba bagpipes got a little bit of a mountain and, culture to it. And Scots, these, I Irish. think these are known as Appalachian, yeah. Appalachian dulcimers. Philip, show those different type of dulcimers, if you will. Now, this is, we're getting a real education today. Now, if I'd have been brushed up on this, I would remember what's what. But I believe this is an hourglass. One's on the side are kind of like hourglass uh, dulcimers. And that was, a, I think the one in the middle is a teardrop. I can't, I should have done more study on that. But, uh, but uh, those are some dulcimers. I took that picture in Gatlinburg at some place I was, at, and I thought this might help uh, show what these Appalachian mountain dulcimers would look like. And they, uh, so the Appalachian dulcimer is a great item. And if you want to learn to play something fairly simple to play, they're kind of, they're kind of simple. Okay, there's Mr. Paul playing away. Isn't that great? And he wrote uh, books on how to tune, how to uh, how to play, how to. Uh, keep care of him. He was a longtime member of the Tennessee Rhyme Time Club. And that, does his, did he have a shop behind his house? I know they lived on Campbell Avenue for a long, Pat, long time. It, I think Miss Powell still it, does. It was about 38 years that I went to see him, huh. and he was in his shop. Of course, he said, "Take, 
take one of these and 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 I can't remember much about it, but I know it was a shop that we were, we were in. I don't know if it's behind the house. I can't remember exactly. Uh, I, I understand. Yes, John, thank you. It, it was behind the house. But uh, read what Miss Powell wrote about Paul. I think that's a I that's a y'all, nice. Y'all know testimony. why this is completely unrehearsed. So if I stumble and bumble and then start scratching, then please forgive me. John, is that, I I'm, I'm, I'm to, may need some help on your writing. Is that busy there? Busy. A portrait of a busy life. Each one is a thing of beauty, the instruments he makes with his hands. Hundreds of them over two decades. They can be found all over the land. When one is polished and ready for strings, he tunes it and plays it, maybe sings. A sweet haunting melody, pleasant to the ears, the mountain dulcimer of bygone years. Everyone will find a deserve deserving home to be played and loved, a treasure to own. Perhaps in that same home, on a shelf, is a book he has written himself. And on a table, a family portrait would be, or a wedding album, one might see. He clicked the shutter thousands of times, capturing memories to leave behind. Could even be he twisted wires to flood his house with light and power when TVA first turned it on. In many rural hillside homes, Always interested in his hometown, to him, Tullahoma is hallowed ground, promoting and boosting in all that he can, researching its history from where it began, always willing and eager to share something he's learned with others who care. At any hour, the phone may ring, asking a question about most anything, perhaps an ancestor or the Civil War, he tries to answer whoever they are. Such diversity of talents and trades, he's a man self-taught, and homemade. God has blessed Paul Powell with family and friends, and I'm glad to share this interesting life with him. That is really sweet, John. You know, I hope that our wives can think of some nice they words probably are today. Probably to are say today. about us. And uh, that is a great testimony to Mr. Powell and sweet words from Ms. Luella. And uh, we. An example to us all. An example to us all. Yeah. Thank you so much. John, that wraps up segment 93 again. We hope management will let us come back for 94 because we have got several stories to go. Thank everyone. That was great. Talking history about this and that. It's conversations with John and Pat. With John and Pat. With John and Pat. It's time for every family and business in Tullahoma to go green and recycle. Tullahoma Public Works makes it simple and easy to recycle. Just place your recyclable materials, paper, plastic, aluminum, and cardboard beside your garbage container on the same day your garbage is picked up. Your recycled materials don't have to be in a fancy container. Recycling is not only the right thing to do, it makes sense. Recycling pays. Paying to bury our garbage costs each of us. Please do your part. Let's go green, Tullahoma, and recycle. Hi, I'm Cindy. And I'm Jacob. I'm the rooster. And I'm the red mate. And we would like to welcome you to Roosterware. Yes, Roosterware is a cottage industry producing accessories for men, women, children, babies, and pets. All items are hand cut and sewn locally. Roosterware specializes in bow ties, pocket squares, scarves, cufflinks, neckties, and aprons of all sizes for all ages. Baby products include onesies, diaper covers, bibs, and burp pads. All bow ties, tie it yourself, or pre tied come with an adjustable neckband. All products can be made with the material of your choice as special orders are available upon request. Don't be standing back looking at fashion. Create your own with Rooster Wear. Come visit us at roosterandredmaiden.com to find our handcrafted designs for the cock of the walk. <laughs> I want to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. I need to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. Why can't I eat, eat, eat apples and bananas? Support the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks to help provide meals to those in need. Join us at feedingamerica.org. 
Get your news first, fast, and free with your News Leader on 6 every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday nights at 6, 8, and 10 p.m. Local weather, sports, community calendar events, and a comprehensive look at the latest news stories and newsmakers as only a video news broadcast can do. Get it first, fast, and free with News Leader on Channel 6, your local information network. Welcome back. It's South Jackson and Sweeney Todd. I have Cynthia Revikoff with me today, and we're talking about Sweeney Todd. Yes, That's this weekend, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. We open on Thursday night. Are you ready? We will be you by will Thursday. Be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, always dress rehearsal. It all comes together. It all comes together, which amazes me. Yes. It's a fantastic cast you have, by the way. Yes, 35 members in the cast. And who are your major leads? Um, we have got John Higdon from the Coffee County High School. He is a theater and physics teacher playing Sweeney Todd. Yes, yes. good job. Um, Heather Kleinfeld, who works with the Coffee County Advocacy Center in Manchester, okay. is our Mrs. Lovett. And she's a fabulous. Yes, she has been seen on stage many yeah. times, as Higdon has. Um, we have new to the stage, Zeb Swirsky. He is from here in Tullahoma. Swirsky, that's Swirsky. a new name yes. for me. He is playing our Anthony. Um, and he is just, he's killing it. He is amazing. He right. has come in and not only done great in his character, but he's also helped with some set construction and things like that. We've, you know, brought him and his wife in to help also with South Jackson. And by the way, Cynthia is the director of this production. It's a huge production. Yes, ma'am, it is. And a, uh, your set, for instance, that's pretty huge. It, it is, it is very huge. It has taken us many weekends. Um, it is about three tiers high within the auditorium. Um, Lots of special effects yeah. and things coming that you, I mean, you expect it with Sweeney Todd to be big and over the top. Right. And especially, Sondheim music is not easy it's, either. I know. It's one of the hardest uh, musicals as far yes. as the music goes to perform. I know you're not using a live orchestra, but nobody can tell that. No, no. We were unable to find enough because you had to have so many instruments like cellos and organists and violins and violas. So it was hard, A, to find enough, much less have a place to put that many right. for an orchestra. So we have um, amazing orchestral tracks where you actually still hear the full orchestra. Right, and that's wonderful. And, yes. and who is in charge of teaching the music? Todd Nichols has done music. Um, he has done an amazing job. He has helped Todd me is before. Such a yes, he's class act. He is, he is. He's loving it. He uh, was a munchkin in The Wizard of Oz <laughs> when I was teaching school. Oh, wow. <laughs> he's a fabulous uh, person. Yes. He knows his music, and I know it'll be good. Yes. So uh, we open. We right. open Thursday. Thursday, Thursday night uh, is opening night. That's something to remember because we haven't done that always. No, we haven't. It's we gonna have be just Thursday, added Friday, Saturday, Sunday matinee at 2.30. Correct. The other dates are at 7. And the, I think the door opens by what time? If we the show starts at 7, we'll open house at 6.30 so they can come on in and get seated. And you can come in early and view the Mitchell Museum and enjoy right. some refreshments. And I think it's a, most people, that if you have your tickets already, you've gone online, which is wonderful. You don't yes. have to stand in a line to get your ticket. I would encourage everybody to get your tickets online. Are the uh, cheaper tickets? Yes, we've given over a discount. Yet. No, you can still get your discount up until Thursday. Until uh, Thursday. And get two dollars off. Online. Correct. If, if you, you buy get, online. You or if you come in the office you can still because it's purchased early. Okay. And then as of Thursday it will be at door prices. As long as you come in before the Correct, time. before we open, yeah. yes. So that, that's a good deal. And yes. how much are the tickets? They are 18, 18 right now at the door. And, and 20 at, no, yes. 18, 18 the, now and then 20, 20 at, the at the door. door. Yes. Okay, I'll get it straight. <laughs> it's okay. Short. Well, that's a good deal because it's a great show and uh, big cast. How long would you say you worked on this? We started, we had auditions in July and we started first weekend in August nice. having rehearsals. We did the first month of August just working on music and trying to understand Sondheim. And and it's beautiful music, by the oh, way. Oh, it is. It is gorgeous. There are some amazing ones. I mean, Eric Peterson is also in this. He is our judge um, who is doing a fantastic job. But there's, I mean, the it ensemble is itself is huge and they right. had a lot. I mean, in, in the ensemble alone, there are actually 32 solos. Wow. Just within the ensemble, and I know the, there's a lot of voice parts because yes. Sondheim is, is tricky with all this lots stuff. of layering. Right, I love <laughs> yes. that. So, a musician, this is a musician's play. They yes, it. it is they a musician's play. I love it, and I, I think that it's always fun to see a musical. There's some dark spots in this show, though. There are dark spots, and you need to be aware that it is rated PG-13. Um, oh, okay. We've, I we've done to very that. well. Um, 
choreographing yeah. some scenes. Did, do you allow like a 12 year old to come if the parents? As long as are, parents understand okay. the content and what is happening. We are, it's nothing like the, uh, the movie. We did not go that dark on it. We've okay. done very well in making it more artistic than gory. Right. So it's, it's a great opportunity, and I notice you have the website there and the phone number. So and if you get your tickets ahead of time, you can get them cheaper. Yes. And there's all tickets the same. Is there a student ticket? I don't think so. I don't think there's a student ticket for our big musicals. Yeah, um, I, I think that's something. I think it's all the same. I think that's something South Jackson's looking at for right. the future. So what made you want to do Swinney Todd? I've always done happy, bubbly performances. Yeah. You know, my husband asked me the same question. He's like, why, sweetie? It's just so dark. And I'm like, exactly. It's not me. It's not yeah. who I am in life. And I just, I, I wanted the challenge to, I wanted it to not just be about Sweeney killing, but to me, it's an emotional release. Something has happened to him prior to being shipped off to Botany Bay. And I, he comes back, and to me, it's very emotional. And so I connected with it in that way. And uh, I think that if people are watching it and they look deep into oh, yes. the concept, you'll find uh, stuff in there that you didn't think was there. Oh, yes, and definitely. I, and I, that always moves me. I'm always looking for that in a play. And I, often I get touched at odd spots, you know what I mean? Right. I can laugh out loud and the next minute I can be crying. Oh, definitely. And even myself, with watching it as long as I have and the cast rehearsing it, I mean, I'm sitting out there just literally script down now. We're just watching runs and tweaking little things, and each night I'll pick up something different. I'm like, oh, yeah, okay. Do you know who's spon I know that you got sponsors on the back of the tickets. Yes. Do you know who's We have got, as of, of right now, we have Buffy's Creations, um, who she is also coming in and volunteering. Um, she's in the ensemble. She's out. doing the makeup, Which some of our special. She is wonderful. Oh, my goodness, she's amazing. She, she does really makeup is. and hair. Um, and we have Rachel Mears, who is an independent insurance agent out of back. Manchester. Um, and we have Ready Cop Construction, who just, you know, happens to be sponsoring yeah, this. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's great. And I don't know, if you're out there and you want to sponsor a show in that way, it's not real expensive no, it's to not. have the tickets are about this big. Right. And you get your uh, organization on the back of that ticket. And sometimes people, like, I remember I got a ticket to Damron's. Yes. It had Damron's on the back, right. and it had, like, a coupon, a yes. coupon, which was nice. And it's great advertisement. I mean, when you've got a theater that seats, you know, 400, 400 people, why not reach them? Exactly. So I thought that was a... By the way, she's our marketing director at South Jackson, and I think we might as well throw in that we're always looking for volunteers. Yes, we always need volunteers. And uh, we've had a, a lot of young people come in lately that I'm real proud of, because obviously it's time for me to walk off and do something else, but <laughs> it's hard to do after all these years. Well, as we always said, many hands make light work. That's right. Well, I think that Sweeney Todd's going to be a wonderful production. It's only on this week. Yes, this weekend Sometimes only. Sometimes we do two weekends, but we're not doing it to on this. No. And so that's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, 7 o'clock, except Sunday matinee at 2.30. And call in, get your tickets, bring everybody you know, and yes, uh, please. bring a guardian for your young people. Yes, and you're going right. to enjoy it. Cynthia, I love what you oh, do. Thank you. you I enjoy fabulous. it. fabulous. I don't know how you have the energy to <laughs> get in here with all you do. She does the band. She does everything else. I enjoy it. We'll be it. back with other things. Smoking tobacco accounts for three of every ten fire deaths in the United States. Structure fire, 202 Main Street, heavy smoke showing. Neighbors advise child trapped inside. Lighters, matches, and associated smoking paraphernalia are the leading cause of preschooler fire deaths. We as firefighters know that most structure fires can be prevented. I've got one! I've got one! Please help us to give you a fighting chance. This can be prevented. Contact the Tullahoma Fire Department for a free home safety inspection. What's a Tennessee vacation? It starts off like any road trip. And then, boom, adventure and thrills everywhere you look, which happens to be some of the most beautiful scenery in the country. Music here, history there, 
and all kinds of green in between. Come relax and unwind, or bring the crowd for some stargazing, or stargazing. Whatever you do, come hungry and expect an awesome soundtrack. It's all right here in Tennessee. We're playing your song. For a free vacation guide, visit tnvacation.com. Get your news first, fast, and free with your news leader on 6 every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday nights at 6, 8, and 10 p.m. Local weather, sports, community calendar events, and a comprehensive look at the latest news stories and newsmakers as only a video news broadcast can do. Get it first, fast, and free with news leader on Channel 6, your local information network. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. I'm glad to have a friend of mine with me today. He's a band leader. He's a music promoter. He's a music venue owner. And just one heck of a great guy, Mr. Steve West from All right, Nashville man. and Manchester, Tennessee. I had a nice introduction. Well, I talked about a, a venue owner. You have a venue. Uh, first, you Manchester boy. Right. Grew up in Ray, Manchester. Went, and went to school in Manchester and right. left and went to Nashville and, and beyond and, and been involved in a music business your whole life. Right, right. And you came back and you bought the church at 117. It, it, it wasn't called that at the time, I but I, I made it. It bought a church and restored it. Right. And, and turned it into Downtown the church. Downtown Manchester. Right. And it was the old, uh, what, Church Christ? Correct, yeah. Church Christ. But the address was at 117. 117 East Fort Street. East Fort Street. And so you named it the church at 117. Correct. And give us a little, give us a little history about that, and what's what's happened there from the time you picked it up, and what's going on now. We've well, had you on before and talked, but you've got something special getting ready. Right, to right. We we've uh, we opened up uh, last year and uh, have been doing at just a special events venue because right. we didn't have any kind of permits and licenses for right. adult beverages type right. stuff, and. Um, so it, we've been doing okay. You know, we've had a lot of reunions, a lot of weddings, um, luncheons, Boy Scout stuff, uh, uh, a number of things, and uh, a little bit of music thrown in. And uh, yeah, a little bit. I was, I've been over there a couple of times. So this guy, this guy is a picker, a singer, a performer, and the bands that he puts together, he has different genre bands that you play in. You've got country, you've got rock. Right, right. Uh, change a few people out and got Nashville pickers coming down. The music is incredible. Yeah, we, uh, well, we've got the classic rock band, Zigzag. Uh, <laughs> we've got the classic soul and R&B band called The Solution, S-O-U-L, Solution. Yes, of course. And the Funky Cowboys, which which uh, we'll be playing on November 10th at the church. Uh, and the F Funky Cowboys do classic country and country blues. Right, right. Chuck Berry to Eddie Arnold. Uh, can't get any better than that, <laughs> man. That's can't right. get any better than that. So uh, what you were talking about the tenth? What's happening on the tenth? Okay, on the tenth we've got um, we're calling it Grand Opening 2018, um, just because it feels like we're opening again with um, a different type of, of venue, but we'll still be doing the same thing, but just adding more to it. Right. So, so it's uh, your second ribbon cutting, pretty yeah, much. Yeah, this is my <laughs> second ribbon cutting. That's exactly <laughs> right. But uh, we put together a really nice event on, on that day. The Funky Cowboys will be playing, but we've also invited uh, a couple of DJs from Nashville, from WXNA, uh, independent station. It sort of came out of the ashes of uh, Vanderbilt radio station 91 Rock right. when, when it was purchased by PLN and became a classical station. A lot of the DJs that were at that sh radio station uh -huh. got together and raised money to open this new radio station, WXNA, and they do independent uh, programming. The DJs program their own shows. It's like it was the old days of FM radio. Oh, man. It's, it's a, it's a low-power station that you, you can't hear it past, uh, once you get past old Hickory Boulevard coming out of town, it, it's 101.5, so you you lose that station. It becomes the rooster, the station in Manchester, <laughs> Manchester. coincidentally, which is crazy coincidence. Which is good for you. Yeah, it's, yeah, I just keep listening, you know. 
But uh, on this particular day, on November 10th, we'll start out at 6 p.m. with uh, uh, the uh, DJ. Uh, DJ, what's it? It's Randy Fox will be playing Hip Billy Jamboree is the name of his program. And I'll have to tell you the description. It's uh, Near Do Well, Hillbilly, Rockabilly, and Western Swing. And then at, at 7 p.m., we've got James Riley DJing, and he hosts the uh, Rockabilly and Blues Hour. So a lot of interesting stuff, and it fits real nicely with the Funky Cowboys things. Oh, that's great. And, and like I said, Funky Cowboys will do from Chuck Berry to Linda Ronstadt to Howlin' Wolf to uh, Eddie Arnold. Uh, and we cover a lot of range. And you, you still have my dear friend and owner of the Mercantile Cafe, Renee Holt, singing with That's you. That's right, Renee. And it's powerful, a powerful, wonderful voice, and just a great lady. She is, I, I love Renee, and we have a lot of fun, and uh, she, you would be surprised that she can bring some blues. Oh, I'm not done surprise me a bit. <laughs> Doesn't surprise me a bit. Yeah, we've got, uh, you know, she covers, uh, oh, she does one song, All Your Love. I, right. I, I think that was, uh, I want to say Howlin' Wolf. I'm not yeah. sure. That may not be right. But she just, she's doing really well. And uh, we've got Andy has been with us a long time. He's, he plays with, bass with me in another band. Uh, the, the, he's a great guy. He's a good guy. That's right. He, he's played with you with different with genres. Zigzag, with You're Zigzag. Right, yeah. with Zigzag. And, you know, the first time I met him was over at your building when you had a, when you had a show over there. And, uh, and then y'all did country show with us. Right. Uh, a couple of years now, and he just comes up and hugs me when he sees me. You know, he's just he's just a great individual, and he brings that 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 energy to his to his guitar, his bass guitar he on and stage. I, he and I've been playing together now for about 13 years. Yeah, and uh, yeah, we've sort of we we sort of understand each other when yeah. we're on stage. Man, that makes it good too. It does. does. And his background, he uh, he actually played on the original Spinal Tap demo recordings. Uh, he's a Chicago guy. He had a record. Yeah. He had a record deal. His band had a record deal on Columbia in the 70s, and. Um, uh, so he, I love it that old guys are still on stage. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and some of you old, older folks might remember Lenny and Squiggy. He toured with them. Yeah. Uh, at, they were after Laverne and Shirley days. Right. Which right. is probably passing over a lot of people's yeah, heads. Yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he's a great guy. And our drummer Greg Sadler is a real solid drummer. We were happy to pick him up. And uh, since he's been with us, we haven't been looking for anybody. We're just yeah, we've yeah, settled in on yeah. our lineup. And now your lead guitar player, you that guy swaps that, that, in and out. No, that's, that's me. You, you've done, you've done that, but you band. also, but you, yeah, on this band, but you also have a. Oh, the Solution Band? Yeah, the Solution Band is a guy that I heard the first time I was over at the, the church. Yeah, you're talking about Bart. Yeah. yeah he was a, Bart's a world-class player. He's yeah. a world-class player. Yes. yes and singer is. and inter he's a great entertainer. Yes, he is. Yes, he so. is. That's, that's some of the stuff we have to look forward to because this guy right here decided to come back home and make an impact on Manchester, Tennessee. And Manchester's rocking these days. Oh, yeah. You come down to the square and check it out. You know, like I, the shops are looking nice and new places opening up and and there's a good synergy going on good downtown. Good places to eat, good places. That's there's right. a microbrewery down there. Right, there? a craft beer place. Right. Alan's got Harvest, uh, local Harvest. They do Harvest food, uh, all locally grown and uh, she's got a great little shop over there. Of course, we've got West Main Brick Oven uh, sure. with good food there, and then Renee's Place, uh, the Mercantile. Yeah. It's, it's rocking in Manchester. Good, good. The historic downtown historic square. Historic downtown Manchester. That's right. And so this, again, this is going to be on the, on the 10th. November 10th, we'll open the doors at 5.30. The first DJ hit with Hit Billy Jamboree goes on at 6. And then at 7 o'clock, he'll be followed by now, the... Now, will there be food there? We'll have food and beverage. Food and and beverage. will that be to be purchased? Purchased, yes. Uh huh. Yeah. So yeah, we'll have food, food, adult beverages, as well as soft drinks, bottled water, and uh, stuff. And um, is there a cover I charge? I guarantee you, a five dollar cover. Five dollars is $5? all. Five dollars. Yes. And this will be a really unique evening of music. And if you, I guarantee your money back if you don't have a good time. 
<laughs> you won't be giving any money back. I, I know so. that. You won't have to. That's Folks, right. keep that on your on your calendar, November 10th. You will already have uh, voted. All of that will be over with. You won't have to worry about listening to all that on television. You can go and listen to some great music. Just celebrate with love, time. baby. Celebrate, celebrate with, with love. love. <laughs> I like that. Steve West, my friend, thanks for coming and being with us. You bet. And know that you're always welcome. I appreciate All that. Right, it's folks. a pleasure. We'll see you in just a minute, folks. Have you heard the news? Russell Barnett Automotive Family has launched its new website, russellbarnett.com. Very user-friendly. Over 1,000 new and pre-owned vehicles to choose from. Online credit applications. Hometown auto rental, customer testimonials, trade appraisals, certified collision center, service department scheduling. Too many reasons to mention why I keep asking the question, why buy anywhere else? My wife Jackie has always been the life of the party, but things changed when she couldn't be as active anymore. They told me I needed a double knee replacement. It's not as big a deal as it used to be, but she still needed to go to rehab. I was amazed at how good the therapists were at Life Care. They took really good care of me. They took excellent care of her. And now she's back doing the things she loves. And that makes everyone happy. Life Care Center of Tullahoma wants you to get active and live well. So you've been meaning to do something healthy, commune with nature, get outdoors and meet new people. We have the perfect solution. Come hike with us. You can find a Tennessee Trails Association chapter near you, including Clarksville, Columbia Franklin, Highland Rim, Jackson, Knoxville, Oak Ridge, Memphis, Murfreesboro, Nashville, Plateau at Crossville, and Upper Cumberland. We're on the web at tennesseetrails.org. It's fun, it's stress-free, and it's good for you. See you on the trails. Hope you guys out there are going to come to Jazz on Jackson. We haven't done it for a couple of years, and I'm so excited to have Jamie Simmons back doing a, a project where they wrote most of the music. They do a lot of stuff that's other people too, but it's a three-piece group. Rory Hoffman is on guitar, Matt Endall is on piano, and Jamie Simmons is a fabulous trumpet player, and we're going to play a little bit of their music right now.
ladies and gentlemen, this is the paint. Uh-oh. I just knock on a tree over. This is the paint doctor. I got the color wheel. Now, you know what a color wheel is? It is the wheel at the paint works where you pick all your colors to paint your room. It could be a multicolored beard. It could be a underarm fan. You never can tell. One thing we do know is that it's time to paint. You know, you can make your wife very happy if you go to your house and paint some rooms or you paint you paint the outside of the house, the inside of the house. It makes them very, feel very good because you work hard for them and they like that. All women like to see their man sweat, you know? They do, they do. Honeydew is what they do. And you get to do it too. So you go to the paint works at 1960 North Washington Street and you see David, David Heikinen over there and he's the real paint doctor. He fix you up with color. It's so nice when the color is right. Go to Paintworks today, Martin Senor. See, Martin Senor, right there. Martin Senor at, at the Paintworks. Bye, and we see you next time. Ha, ah, I'm burning up. You know what, guys? There's a lot of tree branches and dry brush over here. We should probably move the bonfire over there. I'm guessing Smokey liked that idea. Okay, so what would you bring to my company? What do you need? I need problem-solving skills. I got through high school without a car, a phone, or a computer. No college degree, though. Not yet, but life's taught me a lot, and I'm ready for more. Well, you're not the typical kind of candidate that I hire. But you are exactly what I'm looking for. Your company could be missing out on the candidates it needs most. Learn how to find a great pool of untapped talent at gradsoflife.org. It's been a busy day, yeah. I wanted to mention that the Jamie Sim Simmons Trio Project, uh, it's only $15 a ticket for adults, $10 for students. And we hope to have some high school students involved in one of the numbers. We're going to try to incorporate Good. some of the jazz students. So we're looking forward to that. That's great. And there's one other thing happening next week. Really? Sweeney Todd is this weekend. <laughs> next week on Thursday night is when we have the jazz trio. And then on uh, Sunday afternoon at 2.30, we have the Young Artist Showcase, which showcases a lot of, well, maybe local. 12 local fantastic musicians. This is basically classical vocals, clarinet, instruments, uh, Abigail's strings. gonna be on it. Abigail Ab English. Abigail is singing on it. And, Part of uh, our family. One of my students is singing on it, and uh, and the others, Ann Baldwin has a couple of students of uh, vocals. I think there's three, four vocals, maybe. But it's gonna be a wonderful production, and we need to encourage is our Lisa young people. Is Lisa involved with that? Lisa Maurer, who is its state-of-the-art individual. Yes, she is, though. Wonderful. The smart thing about me is that I, I get to know people like Lisa Maurer. Oh, yeah. She puts it together. She makes it happen, and I just suggest it, and she took it from there. Well, and, and that's, like, that's like last week when Becky Buller was on here, and I mean, how lucky am I to, are, have we, her, yeah. are we to be able to sit I and, and, and around and talk to her, yeah. stellar individuals? Exactly. And speaking about that, I went to the First Christian Church this Sunday, and there was a man there, a gentleman there named Bing Futch, F-U-T-C-H, and he, they advertised him as a dulcimer, mountain dulcimer master, and I thought, okay, you know, playing, playing, playing. Yeah. Well, I went over there, probably one of the greatest artists, individual performances I've ever seen. He was in total command of his instrument, just like Yo-Yo Ma or Chet Atkins. Uh, Absolutely phenomenal. We're going to try to get him back into town. Um, go on, go on his website. Go to uh, Ben Bing B I N G F U T C H at yahoo.com or or just .com for his website, 
and see what this guy does. Yeah, I'm really, uh, I'm sad that I missed that. But then Unbelievable. I, I, I had tickets over in Manchester to see Singing in the Rain, which was fabulous. Yeah. I want you so to know. So much going they, on. They had a routine on stage where he, remember when you, if you saw the movie Gene Kelly Dancing yeah. in the Rain? Well, they had the rain on stage. See that right Wait, there? This looks important. See that right there, 1964. Telahoma High School, first year letter jacket. I got that when I was a sophomore. Great. And uh, they're playing in the playoffs. Of course, back then we didn't have playoffs, but Telahoma High School football team is in the playoffs against Marshall County this Friday night at Wilkins Stadium. Be there, fill the seats, and help support this absolutely wonderful Wildcat football team. I wish I could still get in this. Uh, I was just thinking. I bet that you might can, but <laughs> I, I, might I can't. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing how small people were back in those days. And then go and out I mean, and it's true. You know, we had a big, a big lineman might weigh 185 pounds back then. A running backs weigh more than that now. I, I mean, know. It's, uh, that's that, amazing. We're, yeah. we're bigger people, and athletes are bigger, faster, and stronger, and ours are better. So go cheer on the Wildcats. And that's going to be two great teams. Uh, that's it's right. It's going to be a good. It'll be a good thing. A great game. Hey, and the, the elections are over. <laughs> Is it done? No more commercials for <laughs> politicians. We'll be back next time, folks. Come see us again. Tell your friends.